Hey, I've got here another integral from the UNSW integration B2021. This is from the final round, problem one. We have the integral of x squared plus one over x times the square root of x to the fourth minus three x squared plus one dx. Okay, my first thought when I was looking at this is it looks a lot like a um, trick substitution using secant and was thinking, okay, if we complete the square here, we have this x out front here and that might work so I didn't do it that way. It was looking like it was going to be messy. So I tried something else. Looking at this um, numerator, x squared plus 1, gave me the idea to do this trick where we multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 over x squared. Okay, so let's multiply this out and see how it goes. So on the in the numerator, 1 over x squared times x squared is going to give us a 1. And then we're going to have a 1 over x squared here. I'm going to multiply 1 over x squared times x. And we're going to have just a 1 over x and the radical for now is gonna stay the same. But from here, what I really want is, I really want this to be multiplied inside the radical. So what I can do is I can, when I multiply this inside the radical, we'll be multiplying it as one over x squared. And so then let's see what happens. So multiplying one over x squared times x to the fourth, we're gonna end up with x squared. Then one over x squared times minus three x squared, just is gonna be a minus three. And then for this last term, we're just gonna have a one over x squared dx. And then for a moment, I'm just gonna focus on this x squared plus one over x squared and how we can factor this. Now we can factor this, there's two ways to do it, but what I wanna do is write it as x minus one over x squared. When you just square this out, you get x squared plus one over x squared, but then you get a minus two. We don't wanna change it, so we'll add plus two. So let's take this and put this back into our radical and see what happens. So when I rewrite this, we'll have our one over one plus one over x squared. And for our radical, our x squared plus one over x squared is just gonna be this. We're gonna have x minus one over x squared. Then we're gonna have a plus two minus three. That's just minus one. And then you may be wondering why I chose to do x minus one over x instead of x plus one over x. Well, the reason is I'm gonna do a u substitution and that minus sign is gonna help me out. So I'm gonna make my u this right here. So we're going to say u equals x minus 1 over x. And then our du will be derivative of x is 1. Derivative of this, we can look at this as x to the minus 1. So taking using the power rule, we're going to have plus 1 over x squared or x minus 2. And so you see the, because we have a negative power on the minus, that's how we get this plus back that we want in the numerator to match what we have here. Okay, so we'll make the substitution. We notice we have our du as our whole numerator, so we're just gonna have du over the square root of u squared minus one. Okay, so here we just had this pretty standard looking integral. Now there's a formula for this, but I'm not gonna do it. We'll just use the, uh, I'm gonna actually do the trick substitution. And then also with the trick substitution, you notice by doing, we're doing, we just did a substitution, doing another substitution, means we could combine this into just one substitution. I'm only doing the two substitutions just to show it more clearly, but if you want to do it as just one substitution, it's totally fine. Okay, so for that substitution, what I'm going to do in this case, we're going to use secant, so I'm going to make my u equal to secant t, and then our du is going to be derivative of secant is secant t, tan t, dt. And then we'll make that substitution, so we'll have our secant Okay, so now we notice we just have to deal with this in the radical. We have secant squared t minus one, but this is the same thing as tan squared t inside the radical. So we can essentially just cancel these and we're left with just the integral of secant t dt. This is a pretty common integral, so this is just gonna be natural log secant t plus tan t. Okay, and then now we just need to roll this back to u and then to x and then we're done. We know for secant t, secant t is u, and we have our value for u. We just need a value for tan t. What we can do is draw our triangle. Okay, so our secant t is u. We can look at this as u over one. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent with our angle t. So from this, we can create our third side, u squared minus one, just noticing with the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, then when you square this, when you square this side squared plus this side squared equals this side squared. The reason we're doing this, we just want to find our tan of t, which is going to be opposite over adjacent. So our tan of t is just going to be this. So let's just write it up here. Tan t is equal to square root of u squared minus 1. Before I plug this in, let's just do a little simplification. We know our u is secant t, but u is this. 
So our secant t is going to be x minus 1 over x. And then with tan t, let's also write out, write this in terms of x. So we have our u squared, so it's going to be x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. So now I'm just going to back substitute, and I'm going to do it right to x in order to finish this off. So we're going to have natural log, absolute value. Secant t is going to be this. We're going to have x minus 1 over x plus our tan t value, which is the square root of x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. And that's it. We're done. One note here, you could multiply this out or rearrange it and get it to look more like the original. You get it more into this form here. But it's all correct, so I'm going to leave it like that. So we'll stop it there. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a great day.